All right, Lowry, so you wait for some adventuring types to show up, and then you follow into the bar after them, and there they are. Rosendo's inside, he waves to the guys that came in, and then you pile right in behind him. Hey, uh, excuse me, Rosendo, I have a really important question. Oh, uh, uh, hey, you're that guy, uh, the big lizard guy. Yeah, what do you do if someone higher up in the guild kills somebody and you witness it? What are you talking about? Okay, remember when Rutherford asked us to do a job for him and you said not to do it? Well, we went to his house just to hear him out, and Chip was there, and Chip killed Rutherford. They got in a fight, and we ran out of there. Who do we talk to? What? You, you... Uh, like, I don't want to disrespect the chain of command, but isn't the chain just going to lead from you up to Chip because he's above us? D- okay. Chip, you, you say Chip killed Rutherford. Yeah, in cold blood. Who do I tell? Okay. Uh, Rosendo, he waves at the other guys. He goes, can you wait outside? I got to talk to this guy privately. Okay. I try to go outside with the others. No, not you. When I said privately, I meant you wait here privately with me. I don't want to be alone with guild members. You guys might try to kill me for what I know. If you think I'm going to kill you, why did you come here to talk to me about this? Well, logically, unless your entire organization is stupid, as most organizations are, there should be some kind of policy for this, right? And it would be one that you could just tell me openly in front of everybody else. All right. Chip did not kill Rutherford. You did not see this. I absolutely did. Rutherford is dead. Go look it up. Why why, why would Chip even go to talk to him in his house? All he wanted was a non-disclosure agreement without explaining why. If I tell you, I'm afraid that Chip will kill me too. But why did you come to me first and not the police? Well, I didn't want to rat out the guild. I mean, us guildies all have to stick together, right? Everybody here is going to keep this quiet, right? I look at the other guys. They all kind of nod hesitantly. And we can trust the bartender, right? He won't talk. The bartender looks away and pretends he didn't hear you. All right, you know what? Get out. That is strike two. I'm not doing a strike three. You guys broke the rules, and now you're in here talking about chip murdering people for what? For a laugh? Is this funny to you? I am not laughing. Look into it. Rutherford is dead. He died in a struggle. Someone murdered him. It was Chip. Well, then take it to the police. But I don't want to see you around here anymore. Do you understand? I think I understand perfectly, sir. Good day to you. And I leave. Well, you did that. Okay, start looking around for people on the street. Just flag them down. Excuse me, sir, can you read and write? Can can you read and write? Do you have a pen and paper? Excuse me. Eventually somebody goes, yeah, I can read and write. What do you need? Can you do me a favor? I need to report a crime to the police, but I'm afraid of the police. Can you write down, Chip Dougal killed Rutherford? What? Okay, what am I going to do with this after I write it down? Just hand it to me, please. Okay. Chip Dougal killed Rutherford. Is is that it? Yeah, unless you think I ought to add anything else. How come you don't tell the police this to their faces? Because if Chip Dougal finds out I'm the one who said it, he'll kill me. Oh, okay. Uh, He hands the letter back to you. He's not going to kill me, is he? Not unless he recognizes your handwriting somehow. Aren't there, like, wizards in the guild? They could trace that back to me, couldn't they? Uh, no, sir, because magic isn't real. What do you mean magic isn't real? Magic is real. Have you ever done magic? I haven't personally, but I I had a friend who knew a couple of cantrips. Have you ever stopped to wonder if your friend was lying to you? Well, that'd be crazy. Then everybody would be lying about magic, everybody who does it anyway. How do you know they aren't? Because that'd be a really huge conspiracy. But they all profit from it. You all think they have magic powers. Okay, you're obviously some kind of crazy person. Everyone keeps saying that, but they'll all change their tune once they realize they've been fooled. The guy hurries off. Okay, look for, like, a child. Um, oh, first find, like, a really cool rock. Then find a child. Like, Excuse me, little boy, can you deliver this to the police? I will give you this very cool rock if you do. Eventually you find a kid who's down for that. He's like, wow, mister, that's a cool rock. Yeah, I'll deliver this letter. Then he takes your letter and he runs off. Whether he got that to the police, you can't possibly know, but he's uh, gone. I'm gonna hedge my bets. Okay, start looking around for someone else. Sir, can you read and write? And then just rinse and repeat this process pretty much all day long. Surely at some point, one of those is likely to reach the guard. Uh, so okay. Paul and Elvis. It's sundown, and the two of you have met outside Rutherford's house. Hey, Paul. I'm really sorry. I looked for black clothes, but I don't really have any. I did have sort of like a dark tan, though. Elvis, you're wearing latte. Is latte a fancy for dark tan? 
Yeah, it's basically white. Well, if you think about it, it might be better because they're expecting someone dressed in all black to try to sneak in the house. But if I'm dressed in all white, obviously I'm not trying to hide, so it's less conspicuous. I mean, you're not supposed to be in the house regardless, though, so whether they see you go in, that's the problem. But on the upside, though, also I was less likely to get hit by a cart on the way down because I'm more visible in the streets. Whereas you, you're in all black, so... You could have gotten hit by somebody. Well, I got here as the sun was going down. I stood out pretty well at the time. But going home, you're going to get hit. See, this is why I feel like ninjas, they have this big flaw. They should be wearing reflective headbands, and maybe just for extra safety, like bright orange. (laughs) Elvis, had it occurred to you that it would be better for our operation if you'd been hit by a cart on your way down here? How would that help us, though? I wouldn't be trapped in a stupid conversation, for one. Oh, that reminds me. I was thinking on my way over here about my preconceptions about black cats and their dangerous nature. Oh, my God. It occurred to me that what's scary about the cat being in your room to smother you is not that the cat is there or that it's black. It's that it got in your room and you don't know how because the windows were closed and the doors were shut. Cats can't open doors. How did it get in there? Evil magic. And that unknown is the scariest part. Well, you know what? So I was thinking that... Y- you know what? I, I, was, you know, I was... Oh, sorry, you go ahead. I relate to the cat. Oh, good. I thought I was being racist. No, because the cat doesn't know how it got here. Well, the, the cat knows it was put there by an evil witch. And it also wants to smother you. See, but if you think about it, though, a black cat is only, like, what, 10 pounds? Which is not that tough. You could, like, pick that up off your face if you woke up in time. So the thing is, first you have the element of the unknown, which is, like, how did the cat get in there? But then there's the power of the witch. The witch somehow got the cat into your room. And she does a small cat because she's not powerful enough to do her husband. Well, that just sounds like a marital problem. Her husband is too big. Or maybe it's a problem with lubrication. The lubrication comes from evil demonic powers. And the most powerful witches of all could fit her husband anywhere, even your closet. And obviously, she would prefer it if her husband sat on your face instead of a cat. Uh, I don't know. As like a honey-do list, that doesn't sound... It sounds like that would lead to arguments. Honey-do, like the fruit? No, like a honey do this, honey do that, honey go mow the lawn, honey use evil power to get in this man's closet and then smother him with your butt cheeks. Are you sure you have never met an evil witch? Because that is a pretty keen insight into their inner thinking. I'm just saying, you get home from a long day at work and your wife is like, oh honey, could you go sit on this man's face? And you're like, I want to sit on the couch, dear. That's why she uses the cat. I guess that's a good argument. None of this is a good argument. This is all a very stupid argument. You could still measure the power of the witch, though, based on the size of the animal that got into your room. So a cat, like a 10-pound cat, average witch power. A grizzly bear, very powerful witch. Okay, yes, I suppose. So the point is, it's not the cat or the color of the cat that's really scary. It's the question of how does the cat get in there and how big is the cat? All right, good. I'm, I'm glad that you've overcome your racism, Elvis. So if you happen to know a witch, and I'm not saying you do just because you're a black cat, but if you do know them and they happen to get you inside Rutherford's house, that is a very scary witch. Okay, so here's the plan. If we want to get inside the house quietly, first we should find a witch. First, shut up. Second, we're going to go through the back door. Oh, that's good. That's the most unexpected door. Are you being sarcastic right now? No, I, other than the front door, I don't know any other door. Unless you know a third door because you're a black cat and you know a witch. No, there's not a third door. Okay, then the back door is object. That's a good door. All right. And that's it. That's the whole plan? Well, I only had until tonight to think about it. I think it's a good plan. I I still can't tell if you're being sarcastic. Well, a complicated plan would definitely fail. This one is really easy. We just go to the back door. That's the whole plan. It can only fail at one step. Okay. Just stop talking and follow me. All right, you guys sneak around to the back of Rutherford's house. You try the door. It's locked. Okay, but see, though, it did fail on the one step. Okay, the plan has not failed. We just need to find another way in. I pick up a rock and throw it through a window. Crash! Glass shatters. Dogs bark in the distance. Elvis! What? What'd you do that for? Well, now you can open the window. Half the neighborhood probably heard that. Oh, you know what we gotta do now? We gotta get a replacement window and then put it in there after we leave. That way, when people are like, How did they get in? It'll be a bone-chilling mystery, because the window will still be closed. I have claws and the ability to climb. I could have checked to see if the higher-up windows were locked. Well, I can't climb up there. How would I get through a higher-up window? I could go downstairs and unlock the back door. Well, it's not too late for that. You still could. No, the window's already smashed now. Reach in and try to unlock the window. You cut yourself on the broken glass. (laughs) Oh, oh, ow, ow. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, 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 God. I'll put pressure on it. Put pressure on it. Oh, jeez, it's bleeding really bad. Yeah, well, well. Okay, here, let me let me tear my shirt, and I'll turn it into a bandage. 
start trying to tear my shirt. Elvis, no! But, but you're bleeding! I'm not gonna wear your latte shirt, I'm gonna stand out in the dark! I don't know if they make stealth bandages! Well, maybe the bleeding will stop on its own. Right, you clamp down on it for a bit, and it's not really stopping? You gotta get it sewn up. I've got cuts like that before. Well, what do I tell the doctor if I go in? Well, tell him you were sharpening your knife and you slipped. Now, there's, there's bound to be a bunch of broken glass in the wound. Well, tell him you made a knife made out of glass. If I tell him that, they're gonna think I'm stupid. Why? What's stupid about a glass knife? I mean, it's fragile. It'd break. But it would be so sharp. Of course you think it's a good idea. It is a brilliant idea. I can't believe no one else has thought of it. We should be selling glass knives. Am I still bleeding? Still bleeding. <sighs> if you'd let me climb up and get to a top window, this wouldn't have happened. Well, the top windows might be locked too, Paul. You know what I bet? I, I bet Rutherford probably has a suture in there, right? He does spy stuff. Do you think he has any pets or anything? What does that have to do with, the, with, with my bleeding? Well, I don't know. I mean, we're just going in there for all this stuff we want. What if he's got like a pet hamster? I've always, I've always wanted one. He doesn't seem like a hamster kind of guy, Elvis. Well, he's a very active guy and they don't require a lot of attention. They'd be perfect for him. All right, I'm going to climb up the side of the house and I'm going to check the upper window. Okay, you scale the house using your cat claws and agility. You get to an upper window, and it's locked. Is it locked? No. Okay, so should I just wait down here? You're gonna go in? Well, I mean, it's it's not locked, but it's stuck. It's like jammed. Okay. Yeah, why would he lock his upper window? I, I leave mine locked all the time. I don't know. I mean, like, why, why do we have locks on our upper windows? Why is this, why is that a thing? Well, they just make them all the same, you know? Like, you buy the window, and then you I install just, it. I just, I just want something to go right tonight. You hear a voice. It announces... All right, stop right there. You turn and you see the brush of Colonel Wimbledon and two other guardsmen. Okay, hold perfectly still. Maybe they haven't seen me. Colonel Wimbledon says, You up there, get down here. <laughs> All right, don't do anything funny. Keep your hands where I can see them. I climb down. So, gentlemen, what are we up to? I suppose a bit of late night painting or carpentry? Paul, don't say anything. But look, we can explain. Paul, no, don't say anything. We want a lawyer. We will only talk to a lawyer. Look, you don't need a lawyer. Just explain what you're doing and we can clear all this up and I'll let you go. Okay, well, Paul, well, Paul, we, well, Paul, we, no, we left some Paul, things. no, no, no. He just said he'll let us go if we explain. My dad said, always lawyer, no police, always lawyer, no police. Now, now, you don't need a lawyer if you haven't done anything wrong. I don't know why my dad always said that. He just always said it. Always lawyer, no police. Well, look, we're all friends here, okay? No one's in trouble. I just like to know what you're up to. Looks like one of the windows is broken. Do you know anything about that? Yeah. So, Paul, okay, what happened? Oh no. But Elvis, I'm, I'm just going to tell him what happened. What happened is we got a lawyer, and then we told the lawyer. Ah, okay, I think I see the problem. So your friend here who wants a lawyer, we'll have him go wait in the wagon and take him downtown until we can find a lawyer for him, which might be a little while, and you can tell us what happened in the meanwhile. Well, Paul, don't do it. You stay with me. Ask for a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Elvis, I don't, I don't want to be arrested for a couple of My days. My dad said they will arrest you forever if you don't have a lawyer. Well, that that can't be right, because we didn't do anything wrong. And if you didn't do anything wrong, then there's no harm in talking to me. Then why do you have to separate us? Is that too much? Are you going to arrest me for that? No, no, like I said, you tell me what you did, and I'll let you go. Uh, uh, well, I, I cut myself. I see, trying to get inside the building. Just generally speaking, I cut myself. Right, were well, you trying to get through that window over there, and you cut yourself on the window? I... I, I need I need a doctor. I can't stop the bleeding on my own. All right, we'll get you a doctor. I just want to know, did you cut yourself trying to get through that window? Uh, may, maybe Elvis is right. Maybe I should talk to a lawyer. Just answer the question. It'll be all right, and I'll take you straight to the doctor. It's just, I can't leave. You know, I have to write a report. So if you could help me write my report, then we'll see you to a doctor, and I'll let you go. Can you lie? Is that allowed? Can the police lie to people? Nope. Scout's honor. The police cannot tell a lie. Well, I think we have had too much conversation already without the lawyer. You might already get arrested for having too much talk with the police. Elvis, I don't think it's illegal to talk to the police. I don't understand the circumstances. I just know what I've been told. Uh, I, I think I'm going to ask for a lawyer after all. Well, that's a shame. I was hoping that we could be friends and I wouldn't have to throw you in the cell, but uh, I suppose if that's the way you want it, are you sure? Elvis? Lawyer only! Elvis, are you sure? He says he'll let us go. My father has slain a thousand men and will slay a thousand men to come. He knows his stuff. He says lawyer only. Now, who said anything about slaying anyone? You're not here to kill someone, are you? I am here to get a lawyer. I demand a lawyer. All right, then fine. Your funeral. You're going to the wagon and then downtown. 
And with that, Colonel Wimbledon escorts you away. <laughs> <laughs>